Alright, uh, this video is going to be about counters, and uh, long-time viewers may know that I bought a different counter a while back. I bought a Reichel Dana, and I replaced the switches on it and got it running, and uh, you would think that it would be sitting here now because it's a better counter than this one, but um, in playing with it, um, when you get super, super nitpicky, way, way down at the very, very finest digit, it seemed to have a little bit of jitter. And I didn't quite trust it. I didn't know whether the counter was jittering or I finally had enough resolution to measure the jitter of the things I was measuring. So I've left the Hewlett Packard here because I trust it. Um, but um, I have... Uh, since gone a little farther down the rabbit hole, so let me show you that. Uh, recently, I rebuilt this counter, uh, a Heathkit uh, IB1102. Um, and people may have remembered the Rickle Dana that I repaired. And people may have remembered the Rickle Dana that I repaired. And people may. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. They're multiplying. They're multiplying. Um, so. Uh, I'm trying to remember which is which. This is the first one I had, and this is the second one I have. Um, so a viewer of the channel uh, very graciously donated this one. Um, I think he said he had three of them? I don't remember. But he had several of these, and uh, he gave one to me. Um, it had the exact same problems uh, of all Rachel Dana's, is that the buttons just go bad on them, okay? Uh, so I have replaced all of the buttons on this one, and uh, it works perfectly fine. Um, so um, I didn't film that because I already uh, already done the film. <laughs> I've already done one of these, <laughs> uh, but now I have two of them, and I can compare the jitter of the two. Okay, and um, because I have a tendency to hang uh, hang out in bad places like eBay. Um, I, 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 um, <laughs> I bought this one. Um, now, I've wanted one of these for a very long time, and uh, I found a real good deal on one. Now, you can get these for pretty good prices if they don't have the uh, extra channel on them. But this one has the channel that goes up to 1.5 gigahertz. Um, you can buy boards to retrofit these things up to 3 gigahertz, up to 6 gigahertz. Um, if you are so inclined, but this one is stock and it works perfectly. So obviously this is the very best counter I, I, I own now. And so what I'm going to do is uh, try to figure out, uh, do these um, two devices act the same? Do they have the same jitter in them? I'll compare it against the nice... Uh, Agilent one, um, and uh, I guess we can compare it against my old HP as well, although it won't compete with these. These have more resolution and things like that, and they have fancier time bases and things. Um, I'm not really worried about absolute accuracy. That's a matter of what, what reference you put it on, whether it's uh, GPS uh, referenced or, or uh, you know, Rubidium or whatever you want. So I'm going to I'm just going to be taking a look at the jitter uh, characteristics of these things and seeing seems to which one's the most stable at the highest resolution and stuff like that. Um, but let's go ahead and turn some of these on since uh, you may not have seen those old videos um, and nobody has seen this one turned on. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's do that. All right. In case you forgot, this is what the the Rachel Dana looks like. Uh, I can increase. Increase the number of digits here, let's see. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits plus an exponent, okay? Uh, so that's what this displays. Um, this one is able to do uh, two inputs, A and B, and then it has a third input that goes up to 1.40 40 megahertz to 1300 megahertz. Um, and uh, yeah, lovely LED display, which I really, really like. Um, it has a standby button so that it keeps the uh, 
crystal controlled oven, uh, warm all the time, so you don't turn the power off. You just go into standby mode, and then uh, and then wake it up. So that's the way that one works. Let's take a look at the new uh, Agilent one. All right. Uh, so here's the Agilent machine. It also has a soft button. It's on all the time. Um, now, the one thing that I do not like about this particular unit is that it has a fan in it, and that fan is on all the time. So even when you turn it off, the fan is on. And I don't know how long that fan is on, whether it's on always, or whether it just turns off when it's up to temperature. I, I really don't know. But this one will drive me insane. Luckily, I won't have to have it powered on all the time because I'm going to use a rubidium standard for the, uh, uh, for the um, reference. I'm not going to use the internal reference. But yeah, this one would drive me nuts. All right, so let's turn the power on and uh, see how it does here. Yeah, there we go. So it has, let's see here, more digits, fewer digits. Oh, I see. More digits. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digits. So it's a true, a true ten digit, ten digit meter, which is what I've always wanted. Um, and so that's working good. So it's got uh, channel one, channel two. Um, it does not have a third channel. The second channel goes from 100 megahertz to uh, 1.5 gigahertz. Um, and then it'll do a bunch of stats and all kinds of math and a whole bunch of really fancy stuff that I probably will never use. Um, trigger sensitive 50 ohm, oh, 50 ohm load, that's nice. I, won't, I don't have to have my, I don't have to have my uh, 50 ohm load. I can just tell this thing I've got 50 ohms inside. There you go, 50 ohms, so that's nice. Uh, let's see, I believe the regular Dana is 50 ohms all the time, uh, if I remember right. AC 50, DC 50. I'm not sure about that, but maybe the 50 ohms is switched on the regular Dana as well. Anyhow, this is the new granddaddy, uh, granddaddy meter, and uh, I'm not sure what to do with that fan. I'm <laughs> really, really not. I assume it has to be on all the time. Um, I haven't left it on for very long. Um, I got this actually about a month ago, but I've been so busy with other projects I haven't been able to actually play with it much. I turned it on to make sure it worked okay, but other than that, I really haven't run it, run it through its ringers. Um, but yeah, we can see, uh, you know, dithering out there at the last digit, right? So uh, that's kind of what I'm interested in, is this the source dithering? I'm assuming it's the source because I'm pretty sure this uh, Agilent is going to be rock solid out on that last digit there. Um, so we could hook it up to, uh, when we do the test, we could hook it up to a rubidium and see if that's, uh, that's bouncing around or not. And uh, yeah, anyway, there you go. Um, I, have a nice, uh, I have a nice family of, uh, of counters now. And uh, not to forget the one over there. Uh, which is a really nice one because it has the third channel on it. Uh, those those go for go for pretty good money still. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for this one. Um, I'm thinking around four hundred dollars if I remember right. I I don't remember. Um, I remember getting a good deal on it, so it was somewhere between three and four hundred. I wouldn't have paid more than four hundred for it, but it was somewhere somewhere between three and four hundred. Um, but yeah, this is I think the the nicest bench meter that, that Agilent has um, in, you know, in, in a reasonable size. They probably have some really big fancy ones these days. Uh, 